Right. Stan James Jr. Stan James Jr. All yes. right. All right. So you actually worked here one time. Yes, said. I did. All right. So let's let's go back to some of the history. How much how much did Rozo pay for this? Oh, they paid I believe 1.5 or more than that to develop the the area for the gaming commission. No, uh, correction. The GNU Gaming Center that stands behind me over here. Okay. That, that's the gaming center. It was okay. supposed to develop into a bingo hall. This with this whole area was supposed to develop into a kind of a, a business, but it hasn't been uh, designated a commercial uh, uh, area yet. But okay. our understanding back in Rosa River was that uh, the tribal membership was on the assumption that uh, a local uh, tribal member, Kathy uh, Nelson, was going to uh, was provided uh, development of Red Sun Gas Park. Okay. Which at the time, the uh, premier was Gary Dewar. The uh, two individuals who were silent investors, but came in as a, as a, as at the time, a lot of told themselves, we, we're not, we don't own this. We're we're managers. The David and David Dewar, they provided the managing and the accounting. That's they. That's the Dewar Accounting that's located on Portage Avenue. That they they are they are managing this place. When I worked here, uh, pumping gas. They, they it raked in a lot of money, lots of money. I, I know there's millions and millions of dollars. I know there's 50% uh, of the, the agreement is supposed to come back to tribal membership, uh, but they held it off. They, they said they're not paying back nothing to the reserve. They locked it into courts. Uh, we've seen a, out of 100% of what we thought we developed into the, this land is that they have given us nothing back at all. Like, you know, uh, because of the fact they're saying it's privately owned by a tribal member, because the Kathy uh, Nelson is a Rose River tribal member, that they uh, they came through to develop this, and then all okay. of a sudden lately, that's what's can come into the uh, coming to the floor is that they've been saying, yeah, we're we're investors now, and that Terry says, well, the only way we're going to develop this land is that we have to get investors, we're investors, and, we're, and if we don't pay these investors off. Going to scare off the future investors, in which I don't agree with, because this is our land, and if we, if, if non-native people want to come to and develop, they're going to make a hell, heck of a lot of money. But most of the percentage of that should go back to the reserve, like to the owner of the person who's developing a business here, and a percentage should go to the the development of stuff on the reserve. Because when you come back to Rosal, it's 89% uh, poverty of people on assistance, and the only people that are 11% that are are employed are basically handpicked by the the leadership. Like I sat on the gaming center for the Canoe Gaming Center for five years since they developed these these uh, the elected Alfie Henry Hayden, uh, Robert Henry and uh, Zongade Nelson, who are our Zongade is the nephew of Terry Nelson. Mm -hmm. And uh, and Alfie was backed by Terry behind closed doors and, and Robert Henry. The other two uh, former counselors are Gar uh, Gary uh, Roberts and uh, 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 <laughs> my old cousin <laughs> Cecil James are currently the counselors, but they're always being outvoted. And okay. like what happened yesterday, we had funerals this whole week, yeah. and everything was canceled down there. But they had, without telling uh, Gary or without telling Cecil, these three individuals, Alfre, Chief, uh, the uh, Robert, counselor, and Zonga, they had a meeting on Monday without inviting these individuals in regards to Red Sun. And then they had another meeting yesterday, and these guys so were it's not a, it's a violation of your own internal processes anyways. Exactly. exactly. So essentially, the band, Rosa River, they borrowed money, you said, from their the from their own, trust? From, yeah, from the trust. From the trust to, to, to buy this land, to yes. purchase it, and this, this was actually, this whole gas station was actually developed by Rosal Money yes. as well. And that's the argument that we have with them. But it's privately owned. They're and saying you, okay. it's privately, but it was it was developed <laughs> by banned funds. So it's owned by okay. I can't even go. If I go right there right now, like yeah. if I go Okay, so uh, for this private owner, have has she paid anything to to as Rosal? far as I'm, I, I know, I can say no. 
I, you know, if the, I beg to differ if she can come to the table and say, look, this is what we have. But we haven't seen nothing. I haven't yeah. seen no development. I'm a James family rep for Custom Council. Right now, if you look over there, those the two individuals, that's the chairperson, uh, Lloyd LaRock, and that's a family rep, for, well, was a family rep for the Pierre family. Okay. And they're over here trying to find a fight or argue with people uh -huh. over here for, I don't know, because they're in support of this. And that's yeah. kind of funny. You f I find that very funny that they're not standing with us, but saying, look at the injustice, look at yeah. what's happening that on our own land. That All right, how much How much do you think this place is taking in every year? Uh, every year, you know what, the, the, best, the best person would be the Revenue Canada Services, uh, Manitoba Taxation. I think it's well over a million, more than a million, a couple, of at least five million, more than that. They're, they're raking in a lot of money. And that's the tax rebate that's supposed to be... Exactly. For, right now it's, for, it's held up. They're, they're not paying. And that's the $2.4 million that they're trying to uh, they're trying to give them with these VCRs. I have the VCRs if you want to see them later. I can bring them to you. Yeah. And you can read what they're, they're trying to say that he, he signed, in which he never signed. What had happened was custom council was that they referred this back to our custom council table. Yeah. It was this void individual got the papers on Monday, he was running around at night time, bugging other family reps while they were trying to entertain themselves at the, at Bingo and other places, <laughs> and he was handing off these, uh, these uh, what you call it, uh, uh, papers, yeah. uh, those BCRs, and that's a funny thing, that what was going on, and the thing is, what what's, uh, what's happening was that uh, at the next day, he dropped it off at the table, then Chief Council came there, they turned around and they they said that, well, we need you guys to make a decision. Well, that was too much information to make multi-million dollar decision right there to get yeah. in favor of Red Sun. No, we needed to bring back to our families. But there are certain individuals that are questionable. So there's, 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 this is a long-standing issue for the community. Yes. You and got, you got members who seem to be quite involved with the corruption. <laughs> As is, yes. I think exactly. there's signs here about corruption. Yes. Um, and there's a lot of manipulation going on in the background, and and well, how how is this affecting the community? Like I've I've it's I've heard it's families. it's just been a it's been an ugly ugly year out there yeah, too. It, it's we, we've dealt with 16 losses within two months of people who have passed away. Yeah. Within these two months, uh, like a lot of people are talking that you know, like the, they're talking it's you know there's, it's something like karma or something spiritual that's going around on the reserve that's a bad spirit that's taking like like the community split they are they're basically you know they're like a lot of families are split like a lot of people are like the people that were uh, uh, with Ken Henry not supporting him but but basically believing in what his vision and his dreams were uh, you know, we're I was trying to it. take this back. This yeah, this yes. is supposed to belong to the community. So. Exactly, and then all of a sudden, a funny thing is Terry Nelson comes in, who's supposed to be uh, the Southern Chief, not getting involved with the internal uh, mm -hmm. things. And he he was the letters have been sent to the Southern Chiefs to say, look, he's not uh, filling his mandate of uh, developing at the urban uh, account or urban. Uh, uh, reserve, right, in which he was voted in to do. He's yeah. too busy back on our reserve, uh, still involved with TOE. He hasn't walked away from that. He should. That's a conflict of interest, right? There. He won't step down. That's a multi-million dollar uh, uh, stake. That's right that's too. party. That's part of the actual trust fund for the members, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. And when they took that TOE money, they devoted. He was the chief at the time to to get this. <laughs> he promise. borrowed it. And now that he's with TOE, he's yeah. banding it back. Yeah. Now he's the chair. Now he's the president of uh, uh, TOE, He's he wants his money back. <laughs> he wants the money that he borrowed in the first place. But uh, the private owner has doesn't doesn't yeah. have any uh, yeah, exactly. doesn't have any uh, uh, obligations here. Exactly. <laughs> Can I talk to Kathy? They won't know where she is. Nobody knows. I don't even know. I haven't seen her in her years. Wow. Like, you know, I have nothing against the family. I still don't have nothing against our other tribal members that decide to support this and decide to, to back whatever they believe. You know, everybody has a free right. You know, but I wish... The some... bottom line is supposed to be this, and it was, uh, the understanding was it was going to be this, this, and this, and it's yeah. not even remotely... Yes, and exactly. Yeah. It's not the, the ones that are going to suffer are, are the generations, the seven yeah. generations that we're always told to, to speak up for. Yeah. Because, excuse me, uh, at least one thing I like to I like to say is that you know I like to I like to look my my uh, 
my son in the eye, like wake up in the morning time, when he asks me, you know, if this falls in favor of them, what did you do? Dad, what did you do? So I can tell my son what 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 you did, my my dad did, and I can look him in the eye and said, I stood here, and I stood here while others stood against us. Many stood against us, you know, fighting fighting the fight, fighting a good cause. You know, I believe this is a good cause, and I can look him in the eye and look my grandchildren. If it goes in favor for us, great. I can look proudly. I can, can no, no dying that I died with a cause because I spent four years in the PPCOI, 2000 to 2000, serving our country, thinking that I was doing that for the best. But come back to my own community, in which I've been. I was there before, but come home to this, to, to all this, this the stuff you were fighting against, the against, corruption, yes. yeah. You know, yeah. I think I, 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 I think I stood more chance in Afghanistan than I did. I do it. You know, I, I, there's two reserves in there. There's Winnipeg. I moved to the reserves. You can just feel the stress there. You can feel people looking at you. You know, they look at you. You know, it, you know what they're thinking. It's like high school. You know, you go to high school. You get the popular kid. You get against the popular kid. You bring out the guy, the, the outcast kind of. And yeah. we know where that goes. You know, people talking behind your back, saying things about you, making accusations and stuff like that. All right. Well, thank you. Yeah, and uh, you know what? Like I say, I want to make a point is that when I was involved in a robbery here with uh, three other, my nephew was working there, a uh, fellow uh, 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 Destiny was working here, and David uh, Dewar happened to be here working over in the back there putting in stolen the, because they, got, they uh, stole the other safe before, and then all of a sudden they turned around, and what they ended up doing was uh, when we got robbed, and you know, they, 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 I had a shotgun held to my I thought maybe I should. Maybe I should do it uh, my army and stuff like that. Then I thought, you know what? I have other people's lives in my hands. That they, they, they were wild. They had a machete. They had uh, uh, a sledgehammer. They had two guns, a handgun. There was like five of them. And they came walking in. They were like all surrounded, tactical. We all went to the ground. And then uh, they made that girl, try, a pregnant woman, who was eight months pregnant, try to make her lie on her stomach. Lie on her stomach. And I yelled at them when I was on the ground. And I yelled at them. And I said to them, leave her alone. So she had to go on all fours. And my nephew was in the corner there. And he was, he was crouched down. Anyways, while they went, uh, what I ended up doing was that one of the things when we reviewed the cameras is I looked at the chips and I grabbed a bag of chips and I opened it and I started eating it was because I said if I'm going to die I'm not going to die on, a, on an empty stomach that's what I thought I, I don't know what I was thinking because you know it was it was scary and I admit it was scary because of the fact that I was not in control in which in Afghanistan and all those places I have a gun I'm in control but what happened after that after they left I phoned the police the police came we had that, uh, when we were getting up everybody's like we're checking each other out he comes walking he's all taped up like that and, we're, and he's all gagged up and we kind of help him out. okay you guys go out there and start pumping gas and, and what like the guy I tried didn't... to make us pump gas right away I know he, and then, violation of basics of labor law never mind being yeah, exactly. uh, being and, a crime scene yeah exactly yeah. and all he gave us was oh here's a hundred dollars we didn't even know at the time he didn't explain you know what we could have we could have took him for a lot more money. Yeah. yeah, we could have made like you know loss of it. And I had to take a couple of days off for stress leave, and they let me go because they were upset for the fact that oh, they see okay. me in a Are they of are they using this as a tribal business then? Yes, uh, David Dewar and Davy Dewar. They're using it as oil too, because yes. normally when when any business is robbed, it's a workers' comp claim. Yes, exactly. They they don't do workers' comp here. <laughs> they won't pay into it because they said it's it's fifty thousand dollars per year per person. Because I looked into no, that. No, it's not that. Yeah, that's what they're saying. They said, right. and then when I asked them, can you? Uh, because I believe in paying in the, in the, our, you know, our uh, our income tax. I so it's a private it. business, but it's still a tribal business, but not paying anything into the. Okay. <laughs> yes. So they say yeah. they're they're a reserve, and a lot of people that come here they live up north and they they, 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 they see the sign and yeah they, yeah, they make assumptions. Here, they think, well, we're supporting our people. Power to the people, but yeah. you know what? They're not giving anything to us.